Okay, one other thing I want to make sure, um, like we were testing the key switch a minute ago, make sure you don't have a faulty kill switch. So let's find it here. And that's just this black and white and the green. Um, if it is stuck on, your bike won't start. Even if you turn it to run and it goes to the run position and turns over, uh, the switch can actually go bad inside and then you're, and you're poo pooed. So let's test it. And again, we got it on our sound. So that one turns off and on. That means it's a good, good system. All right, so we got uh, whatever problem it's going to be, we're going to get to the bottom of it. Screws don't run. Um, so we're going to pop the seat off and we're going to get to the motor and we'll start checking spark, things of that nature. Um, and we'll go from there. Typically on most of these screws, you got some 10 millimeters here, some 10 millimeters down there. Some of them you have to take the seat screw off. Some of them you don't have to. So first thing we're going to do is test for spark. We just got a random spark plug and uh, we'll just stick it up next to the frame. I'll wait for him to give me the keyword. We ready? Get your fingers wet? Yeah. So we don't see any spark on this particular bike. Alright, we're just going to take that piece of plastic off. It only had one screw. Anyway, there's already missing some. Like most of us. Alright, so we don't have sparks. We need to uh, check a few things. We can check our CDI, and we actually just have extra parts, so we can throw parts at things if we wanted to. Or we can check it the right way. So, if you have your bolt meter, let's check and see if we're getting correct bolts. Alright, so our CDI is here, and here's our wire loom. Green is a ground, so we'll need to use it, and we can just take our voltage tester and plug it to AC uh, got enough space in there we can do that we're going to test our black and red wire first all right so we got AC and let's turn it over and see what happens try it again All right, so we've got 60 AC volts. That's plenty of volts to feed the computer. Let's check the blue and white lead, which is your trigger. Actually, on this one, it's going to be a blue and yellow. It appears. And hopefully, we're making contact. Let's see. Try it again. see any trigger on this one just make sure that's the right wire yes it is 100% so we'll try one more time I see no trigger on there we should have had about two volts on this so it appears we don't have a trigger um, let me see if I can't make something up right quick and I'll show you all something. All right, so another way we can test our trigger is we've pulled off the cover over there on our flywheel and now we've just got the fan exposed. So we ran our ground into our green wire and we put our red up into our sensor. And if you turn the flywheel by the sensor, you can hear it completing the circuit and causing it to work. So we got to figure out what else it is, and we'll check our gap on that. But if you'll notice, if you'll stop for a second, our ohms are at about 134. I was thinking they should be about 136 or something, so that's that's right about right. 
Um, so we just need to figure out what else it could be. We may be missing uh, some kind of ground or something somewhere. All right, so um, we got spark back magically somehow. We'll have to check that out. May have just been a wire in there. Um, my voltmeter still was not picking up the pickup trigger as far as one volt, but this thing, my bottom setting is 400 volts, so that might have been an issue. I'm going to see if it's getting gas now. So I'm going to have him start it. I'm going to put my hand over here. And so my hand's got a little bit of wetness on there. Gas smells halfway decent. So we'll see if it'll start now if he'll pop it over and pump it a couple of times. We got sparks. We're going to pull. Huh? That's freaking the magnetic field because oh, the yeah. deals are on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take out that spark plug. Let's pull the plug. All right. So let's just, I've got a couple of six wire coils here. We'll just check. Now, if this is in your scooter, obviously you can just unplug this from where your comes, the flywheel comes out. And we're gonna test this red and black wire here. Um, so you need a voltmeter. We're gonna put it on ohm setting. This one's gonna be on 2000 ohms. Um, so you would clip this to your frame or your, you could even put it to, uh, just put it to the frame or a bolt up somewhere on the frame. And then we're gonna check our red wire. And this particular one's 510 uh, uh, ohms, 510 ohms. And that was, measures the resistance in between the wire and actually on this one we're only really checking this one the rest of this is our charging coil so this is the coil we're actually checking so let's see what this other uh six coil does just for serendipity because that one actually is from what i've seen is usually a little bit high and so our prong fell out which is going to be helpful so this one here is like 490. Let me put that back in. So you got 493 on that one. If you can keep it plugged in. Um, so these are good coils, both of them. Um, Anything over, I've even seen some at like 380. That's some of these other coils like these. These are usually run about 380. And I guess depending on your CDI, how much, if you get resistors or something in there. But this is a good coil for that. So let's check the uh, trigger coil and see how many ohms it's putting out. And it's going to be your uh, blue and white wire typically. So that one don't have a trigger. This is the only one we can check. Let's see how it goes. We're going to have to ground it to the actual trigger itself. And this is going to be a blue and yellow one. Typically, I think these are usually around 150. So 149 ohms, typically, on your trigger. And uh, you could test these if you had a little refrigerator magnet to zip it by there. Actually, it's already got stuff collected on it. Um, wave any metal by it. You can tell it works. So, usually typically 150 ohms. So, if you have that, you know that your charging system has worked. Let's check out some coils, see if we can get some ohms off of it. All right. So, let's just, I've got a couple of six wire coils here. We'll just check. Now, if this is in your scooter, obviously you can just unplug this from where your comes, the flywheel comes out. And we're gonna test this red and black wire here. Um, so you need a voltmeter. We're gonna put it on ohm setting. This one's gonna be on 2000 ohms. Um, so you would clip this to your frame or your, you could even put it to, uh, just put it to the frame or a bolt somewhere on the frame. And then we're gonna check our red wire. And this particular one's 510 uh, uh, ohms, 510 ohms. 
and that measures the resistance in between the wire and actually on this one we're only really checking this one the rest of this is our charging coil so this is the coil we're actually checking so let's see what this other uh, six coil does just for serendipity because that one actually is from what I've seen is usually a little bit high and so our prong fell out which is going to be helpful so this one here is like 490 Put that back in. So you got 493 on that one. If you can keep it plugged in. Um, so these are good coils, both of them. Um, anything over, I've even seen some at like 380. That's some of these other coils like these. These will usually run about 380, and I guess depending on your CDI, how much, if you get resistors or something in there, but this is a good coil for that. So let's check the uh, trigger coil and see how many ohms it's putting out. And it's going to be your uh, blue and white wire, typically, so that one don't have a trigger. This is the only one we can check. Let's see how it goes. We're going to have to ground it to the actual trigger itself and this is going to be a blue and yellow one typically i think these are usually around 150. so 149 ohms typically on your trigger and uh you could test these if you had a little refrigerator magnet to zip it by there actually it's already got stuff collected on it um, wave any metal by it you can tell it works so usually typically 150 ohms so if you have that you know that your charging system is work let's check out some coils see if we can get some ohms off of it all right so i stuck my ohm meter on 200 and attached the black lead to the black deal and the red to the green so we got 1.2 on here if it'll read again And on this other coil, it's at 0.9. I believe both of these coils are good. So on the ohm setting around 200, if you round one, I, I believe your deals are good. You can't really, if you can pull these wires out, you can ohm them, but there's no connection in between those. Creates a uh, magnetic electromagnetic field and that's what causes the spark so uh, if you have checked everything you can ground a uh, ground to your frame put your voltage on AC check your black and yellow wire that goes to your coil if you don't have any voltage going to it in the AC then your CDI is probably bad um, if you got voltage and don't have it there, your coil's probably bad if you don't have a voltmeter. Um, so anyway, y'all like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Uh, next one will be probably either vent lines, fuel lines, or uh, transmission and stuff. All right, so I stuck my ohm meter on 200 and attached the black lead to the black deal and the red to the green. So we got 1.2 on here. If it'll read again. And on this other coil, it's at 0.9. I believe both of these coils are good. So on the ohm setting around 200, if you round one, I, I believe your deals are good. You can't really. If you can pull these wires out, you can own them, but there's no connection in between those. It creates a uh, magnetic, uh, electromagnetic field, and that's what causes the spark. So uh, if you have checked everything, you can ground a uh, ground to your frame, put your voltage on AC, check your black and yellow wire that goes to your coil. 
If you don't have any voltage going to it and the AC, then your CDI is probably bad. Um, if you got voltage and don't have it there, your coil's probably bad if you don't have a voltmeter. Um, so anyway, y'all like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Uh, next one will be probably either vent lines, fuel lines, or uh, transmission and stuff. So we're out of here. So uh, for this build, I'll put uh, links in the description. Go down there and like and subscribe, hit the bell. And there's more videos to come of all different kinds. I do all kinds of stuff. But anyway, uh, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helps somebody and saves some money.